Hey everybody, my name's Paul, I'm the Gamer Scott and welcome to my first look at Circuit Superstars, a top-down racing game with an adorable tilt-shifted art style. But don't let that look fool you, this is not Baby's first racing game. Before we start, I just want to remind you that I stream indie games like this every Wednesday right here on YouTube. So if you want to join me and the rest of the clan, hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell and we'll see you then. The first thing you'll notice in Circuit Superstars is the way it looks. It's super cute and it has this sort of tilt-shifted look that, that makes it seem like you're watching scale models race around the track. I love tilt-shift in general and that's what actually attracted my attention when I first saw Circuit Superstars at EGX back in 2019. The music's pretty good too, you should be able to hear some of it in the background. It's not quite synthwave, not quite EDM, but it sits somewhere in the middle. It's all super high energy though, so it'll keep you pumped for the next race. If you would like me to let you hear a few seconds of uninterrupted in-game music in future videos, please let me know in the comments. I'll drop it in next time. Thankfully the music stops for the races though, because, and it's just a personal thing, I much prefer when more serious racing games let you hear the sound effects. Of course, the most important thing in any racing game is how the vehicles feel to drive. While Circuit Superstars might still be in early access, they've got the driving feel absolutely nailed down. Each of the vehicles feels very different to drive too, from lightweight 60s formula cars that slide across the track right up to racing trucks that lumber around corners, it all feels great. It can take some getting used to though. I found that my first couple of races in each car were always a waste of time, while my brain got used to the new handling models. But to be perfectly honest with you, I think that's actually a good thing. After all, there's no point having a, a load of cars to choose from if they all handle exactly the same. Curbs also have texture, so you'll really notice it when you go over them. Some of the lighter vehicles will really hurt if you clip a curb, while others will roll over them with no drama. So there's going to be some real racing line learning for each track. One major feature in Circuit Superstars that I really wish more racing games had is proper tyre wear, fuel management and pit strategy. On the higher difficulty levels, you'll burn through a full set of tyres in 9 or 10 laps, and there's a huge handling penalty for running on old rubber. It's quite gradual, but really noticeable. Likewise, fuel gets burned and will need to be topped up. If you run out of gas, you don't actually stop, but the speed penalty is so high, you might as well just quit and restart. Unless you've got the biggest lead, you're never going to catch up. And that means you need to think about your pit strategy. Do you pit early, give up time in the hopes of making it back when everyone else pits later? Or do you try to pit at the very last minute in the hopes you've built up enough of a lead that you'll be out before the cars behind you catch up? The AI cars have their own strategies as well, so you'll never know who's going to do what at any time. And unlike a lot of other games that do have pitting, it's all manual. You need to drive right up to your crew and in the right spot or they won't do anything. It's super cool and I can imagine it could be a big deal in longer multiplayer games. There's one little feature I want to draw attention to because I think it's awesome. As the race goes on, tyre marks appear on the track. It sounds like a really simple thing but it adds so much life to the track. It makes you feel like there are actually cars leaving an impact on it. In real racing, this rubber can actually improve grip on the corners and I don't know if it does here but it would be absolutely amazing if it did. The other thing I'm not sure about is if the tyre marks are legitimately where the majority of the cars actually go, or if it's a baked in racing line that just appears over time. It's probably the latter, but again, if it was based on real track activity, that would be fantastic. Multiplayer is the place where Circuit Superstars will either find its feet or come crashing down. Online play doesn't seem to be enabled right now, but I really think that's where people will have the most fun with it. Taking on your friends remotely would be great fun. There's also split screen for local play. Unfortunately, we're just coming out of lockdown right now and I have no friends anyway, so I can't test any of that. The frame rate for four player split screen was horrible at EGX and they've had a couple of years to get on top of it, but it's worth bearing in mind if you're looking for something to play on one machine. I had no issues with two player split screen on my rig. Another great feature and one that I always love is the daily and weekly challenges. Just like in Art of Rally, link to that video on screen right now, you're given a specific card and track combination to see how you stack up to the rest of the world. This is done in a standard time trial format with no fuel or wear so you've got unlimited tries to shave off those milliseconds. 
It's also a great way to keep players coming back over time. I'm just not going to be anywhere near the podium anytime soon. I haven't seen any bugs in about 5 hours of play, so most of my issues are just with the UI and some quality of life stuff. For example, when you finish a race miles ahead of the pack, you still need to wait while the other cars cross the finish line. There seems to be no way to skip to the results, which can be a bit annoying if you're a lap ahead and you have to sit and watch your car slowly meander around the track. The career mode is a bit content light right now. There are a few difficult levels to choose from, but really all those do is increase the lap count and the AI's skill. Everything other than the lowest amateur setting has collisions and wear turned on, which is fine, but again it would be nice to have the option of taking on the highest difficulty AI over 5 or 10 laps instead of 25. Those 25 lap races typically take about 15 minutes to finish, and that's no fun if you know you're going to finish last after the first lap. I know I said that multiplayer is probably going to be the big seller here, but this could just use a bit more work. Of course with early access this is something that could change at any point, and make most of my video worthless. Um, oh. I could also use some more tracks. There's only a handful and while they're all really well designed, I don't think there's enough of them to support a lot of repeat play. Even in the career mode you see the same ones over and over. And even with the daily challenges, there's a limited combination until you've exhausted everything. I understand that they take a lot of work, and at least one is currently flagged as being in beta, but you can never have too many tracks. I'd take one new track or five new vehicles pretty much any time. I recently realised I've never talked about accessibility options in my first look videos, so it's been a long time coming and it's definitely time to start. I'm going to break it down into three sections visual, physical and cognitive impairments so that we can look at the options games are providing. I'm not an expert here, so if you've got suggestions for more areas I should look at please let me know in the comments or give me a shout on Twitter. Circuit of Superstars currently has no colourblind or high contrast visual options at all. The viewing angle is pretty wide and zooms out at speed, but I guess the best option you'd have if you're struggling to see your vehicle is to give it a custom paint job. There are also no controller remaps for people with physical disabilities. You can choose between keyboard and joypad, meaning some of the aftermarket controllers like Xbox Adaptive or the custom special effect charity mods might work, but you can't swap any of the pad controls around. The saving grace for Circuit Superstars here is custom difficulty settings. In free play mode you can set any difficulty you like as well as switch off or on any assists you like. There's no steering or braking assists here though, and the cars will always handle the same for everyone. Of course, again, with early access it's possible that any of these could be addressed before launch, so if that happens please let me know in a comment so that I can update that in the description. Circuit Superstars is in early access on Steam now and is coming to Xbox One, PS4 and Switch in the future. I really like it and hope they can live up to my expectations. If you enjoyed the video then please drop me a like, if you didn't, dislike button's right there as well, and if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button like it's nitrous in a Fast and Furious movie. Once again, I stream games like this every Wednesday and I have new first look videos as often as my schedule allows. I'm the Gamer Scott, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.